Mrs. Scott, you say that you decided to give this letter to Logan Swift despite the fact that his wife asked you for it first? Yes, that was my decision. Why did you favor one parent over the other? Because I believed that Logan Swift would make a better parent for the little boy, and I felt that the truth about the letter should come out, uh, considering its contents. Are you absolutely sure about the contents of this letter? Are you sure that it wasn't merely permission for you to keep that baby for only a brief period of time? No, the letter stated that we were to raise him as our very own son. Mrs. Scott, how well do you know Logan Swift? Well, he's a very good friend. He was, is my husband's best friend. You say was because until recently you thought that your husband was dead, didn't you? Yes, I did. In fact, for the last six months you've been living the life of a widow. Objection, Your Honor. This uh, testimony. I promise is connection, Your Honor. Very well, you may proceed. Mrs. Scott, isn't it true that during the six months that you thought your husband was dead and buried, that you and Logan Swift drew closer together? That you became more than just friends? That in fact you actually fell in love? That you were lovers? Objection, Your Honor. This is only an attempt to embarrass and disconcert this witness. Mr. Rutledge, I still fail to see that you have made a legitimate connection in the case at hand. Well, Your Honor, I believe the witness is falsifying this evidence out of a personal bias. Your Honor, we object to these allegations. Yes, sustained. Now, Mr. Rutledge, if you wish to prove that the witness is perjuring herself for personal or other reasons, you'll have to do more than make assertions. That is not the way to impress this court. Excuse me, y Your Honor, but I believe I have a right to answer that question. I would like to answer it. Well, very well, Mrs. Scott. It isn't true. It just is not true. You're not in love with Logan Swift? The, the only reason I am in this courtroom is because I know the truth, and I think everyone else should know it, too. Now, Mrs. Scott, the uh, night that Mrs. Swift left for London, uh, before she boarded the plane, when she came to your home, you said that the uh, baby, Jameson Swift, was already in your home. Is yes, that right? I, I had been taking care of him for the past couple of days. You were very fond of that little baby, weren't you? Yes, very fond. Did you have any children of your own then? No. As a matter of fact, your doctor had just told you that you probably never could have children, didn't he? Yes, but the doctors were wrong. I have a little girl. Yes, but at the time, you despaired of ever having a family of your own, and that made you even more attached to little Jamie, didn't it? I suppose so. Did you want to keep him? Yes, of course I did. Yes, you did. In fact, Mrs. Scott, you wanted that very much, didn't you? Why shouldn't I? Mrs. Scott, isn't this the real truth? That you wanted a child of your own so badly that you indulged in a little wishful thinking? That you decided completely on your own that Mrs. Swift had given you that child to keep rather than merely ask you to care for it? No, it was not wishful thinking. Mrs. Swift did give us her son and she gave us a letter stating that he was ours. Ah, yes, the alleged letter. Look, the letter may not exist now, but I remember what it said. Do you? Word for word? Well, not exactly. It was a long time ago. Well, tell us what you think it said. I, Raven Swift, uh, do hereby give April and Draper Scott the right to raise my son, Jameson Swift, as the very own. It was something like that. Sounds very much like a legal document. Tell me, was Mrs. Swift an attorney? You know she is not, but her husband is. Yes, and your husband is too, isn't he? Yes. Tell me, Mrs. Scott, isn't it just possible that you're imagining this letter the way you wanted it to sound? No. That is what the letter said, despite the fact that I don't remember the exact words. Weren't the exact words more like, 
I, Raven Swift, do hereby give permission to my friends, Mr. and Mrs. Draper Scott, to care for my baby until my return from abroad? No. Objection, Your Honor. The counsel is putting words in the witness's mouth. I'm going to overrule. If Raven had not thrown that letter off my terrace, I, it would be here right now as proof. Do you insist that Mrs. Swift deliberately destroyed this document? She threw it away. That's the same thing. Tell me, did she have it in her hand at the time? Yes. Well, then why didn't she simply tear it up? I mean, if she wanted it destroyed, wouldn't that have been the best way? Tear it up, burn it? No, she wanted it to look like an accident. She said that the, uh, the wind uh, blew it out of her hand. That is a lie. I never said Mrs. that. Mrs. Swift, we will have no more of these outbursts. I'm sorry, but that woman is lying. If you won't remain silent, I'll have you removed from this courtroom. Now, you may go ahead, Mr. Rutledge. Tell me, Mrs. Scott, was there anybody else who witnessed this extraordinary event? Anyone else who saw Mrs. Swift presumably throw the letter from the terrace? Yes, uh, her husband, Mr. Swift, was there. Oh, well, her husband, yes, and he'll gladly corroborate your story, won't he? Look, I swear to you that the letter did exist, and if you don't believe me, you can ask my own husband. But you just told us that your husband and Mr. Swift were best friends. That doesn't mean he would lie for Mr. Swift. Well, then why hasn't your attorney called him as a witness, too? Objection, Your Honor. We don't need instructions from the opposing counsel as to how to conduct our case. Yes, I'll sustain that objection. Thank you. Mrs. Scott, after Mrs. Swift left for England, after leaving the baby in your care, did your husband give the baby to Mr. Swift? Logan is Jamie's father. He had every right to him. Ah, but he wasn't the legal parent at he the time, was he? He is Jamie's father. How much more legal can you get? Was it your idea to give the baby to him? No. Was it your husband's idea? I suppose it was. Look. When Mr. Swift realized that his wife had no intentions of returning to Monticello and that she had given us Jamie permanently... He was rather justifiably upset. So you just handed the baby over to him? I told you he was entitled to... I didn't ask you that. I want to know if you voluntarily agreed to give the baby to Logan Swift. Or maybe it was done against your wishes. I didn't necessarily agree with it at the time. Why not? Very selfish reasons, Mr. Rutledge. I wanted to keep him. Wasn't it because you knew it was wrong? Because you had faithfully promised to keep that baby only until Mrs. Swift returned? No. Wasn't it because you realized you had broken a solemn vow? That you had betrayed a woman who thought you were her friend? Oh, this is ridiculous. Raven Swift doesn't have any friends. That's right. Right now, Raven Swift doesn't seem to have any friends. Not in this courtroom, anyway. Just as she no longer has any family. No more questions, Your Honor. Very well. You may return to your seat, Mrs. Scott. Uh, Mr. Nelson, if you wish to call another witness. Uh, Mr. Nelson. Oh, yes, Your Honor. Do you wish to call another witness? Um, oh, y yes, of course, Your Honor. Uh, Um, Your Honor, we'd like to call uh, um, uh, Detective uh, Deborah Saxon to the stand. Detective Deborah Saxon, please take the stand. Place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. State your name. Deborah Saxon. Be seated. So when you learned that the baby had been taken from Monticello General unlawfully, what did Objection. you do? If it was unlawful, why wasn't Mrs. Swift charged with a crime? Well, I can answer that, Your Honor. Mr. Swift didn't wish to press charges against his wife at the time. As a point in fact, Mr. Swift was advised that he should do exactly what his wife did, that is, steal the baby back again. Objection! Steal is a rather strong word, Mr. Nelson. All right, Your Honor. Appropriate the baby back, but he chose not to do this. Now... When you found that the baby was taken from the hospital without the father's permission, what did you do? 
We tried to locate Mrs. Swift and her son. It wasn't very easy because she had already left her hotel and didn't leave a forwarding address. Sounds as if uh, she were expecting someone to come looking for her. I'm sure she was. Well, what did the police have to do in order to find her? Hey, just a moment, Mr. Nelson. I'd like to question this witness. Detective Saxon, was this an official police investigation, or were you acting as a private citizen? Oh, yes, we received a complaint, and it's our job to follow it up. And the complaint came from Mr. Swift, I assume? Yes, sir. I see. You found the uh, missing mother and child, didn't you? Yes, in ten days. Mm. And uh, what happened then? Detective Calvin Stoner and I went to her new apartment. We wanted to question her about her activities and her intentions. And in what condition did you find this new apartment? Well, frankly, it was a mess. The place was dirty. The child looked like he hadn't been changed or cleaned. Uh, there was a teenage babysitter there. Objection, Your Honor. Since when do the police investigate welfare conditions? No, I suggest that this is pure prejudice on the part of this witness. Well, there was no investigating to be done. Everything was there in, in plain sight. The apartment was a mess, and so was the child. Thank you, Detective Saxon. No more questions. Very well. Uh, Mr. Rutledge. Miss Saxon, you say that you had difficulty locating Mrs. Swift and her son. Do you generally have difficulty finding the addresses of ordinary citizens? No, we don't. Uh, Mrs. Well, it was Swift a new did... apartment, you know. Uh, don't you think it's only natural that a new address and phone number might be a little more hard to find? Although, of course, one would think that a trained police officer wouldn't have that difficulty. Mrs. Swift didn't want and us to And the mess find that her... this apartment was in. Let me ask you something, Miss Saxon. Did you ever move into a new apartment? Yes, I have. Did you ever see a new apartment that wasn't a mess for the first couple of days? Well, I don't think... And I want to ask you one more thing, Miss Saxon. Were you aware of a report by Mrs. Benita Thomas about the conditions in Mrs. Swift's apartment? That report occurred after I... Now, don't you think I... that an experienced welfare worker knows just a little bit more about this kind of thing than a police person? Mr. Rutledge, Thank you, Miss Saxon. You... No more questions, Your Honor. Very well. You may step down, Miss Saxon. say it. I did a lousy job. Well, that's not true, Cliff. Things went about the way I expected they would. Oh, we were shot down in flames. You know that as well as I do. Bet you wish Mike were here instead of up at the governor's conference. Did you just stop it? You did a fine job with April. You impressed the judge. I'm sure he could see that April was telling the truth. <laughs> She was fabulous. You made it look as if she did it all for love. Oh, well, I mean, Raven and the baby, not, not it. I know what you meant. I'm sorry about all that gossip stuff coming out. We knew it would. That is why I did not want April on the stand. Oh, we knew who put him up to that one. I should say who put him down to that one. Well, it was Raven's idea. There's no doubt about that. Well, what would you say to a hamburger, huh? Right now? Yeah. I'd say hamburger. I don't think I could take it now. Quit. Do you have a statement for the press? I'm sorry, no, no. Excuse me. that door, you coward. If you promised to be a lady. Do you realize what you did? You stood there and waved that thing all over the place. You think it's a real funny, don't you? I did find it a bit amusing. Yeah. yeah, and then you dropped the thing at Cliff Nelson's feet. He didn't even bother looking at it. People are not as observant as you think. Elliot, if he had looked at it, he would have stood up, stopped the whole trial, and they would have proved that I lied. Come on, nothing happened. Why are you so worried? As a matter of fact, I think things went pretty well for you this morning. You could have lost this case for me. You mean with, uh, this? Oh, give that back. I need that, darling. I need it more than you do. This isn't the letter. It's a bill. Yeah, it's my laundry bill. From the unicorn. Huge, isn't it? All those tablecloths and napkins. Come on, darling. You are a monster. Can't speak that way to your best friend. 
I don't have any friends. Didn't you hear the court? Oh, yes, that was a very touching scene, wasn't it? How many times did you rehearse it? Well, just wait until you inherit your baby's millions. You'll have more friends than you know what to do with. How about some lunch? With you in public, never. I thought you'd feel that way. See you later. When I get my baby's millions, I won't need any friends. I won't need anybody. I always liked Nadine. She was very kind to me. You have our sympathies. You can imagine my shock when I heard. I was inconsolable for days. But I'm beginning to come out of it now. I was hoping that I might get a chance to see you if you came over here to accompany the Ashes back to England. Well, my first reaction was to drop everything and catch the first plane stateside. Uh, but Raven informed me that she was taking care of all the unpleasant arrangements. That she did. And that left little purpose in my making the trip. And since I was in the middle of some very important litigation, it seemed I could do more here, taking care of business and uh, consoling Nadine's many friends. Well, that makes sense. Uh, I know this is a bad time for this, but would you have a few minutes to talk to a friend of mine? It's a police officer. Please? Yes. Deborah Saxon, you do remember her? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Sir. Well, mm. she's doing an investigation of Hutton Nadine's accident. Mm. All right, well, I'll talk with her. Thanks. Mm. Mr. Scott. Yes. I'm very sorry to have to speak to you under these conditions, but sure. I'll try to be brief. I'm, 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 I'm rather perplexed, Deborah. Since when does the local constabulary go around investigating accidents? Well, we look into all traffic accidents that result in fatalities. Well, that makes sense, I suppose. Uh, Mr. Scott, we have yet to pinpoint the cause of your wife's death. Uh, now, apparently, there wasn't any mechanical malfunction, and whatever thought we had as to a physical ailment being the cause of your wife's loss of control of the car was made impossible to validate by your stepdaughter's insistence on having the body cremated. I'm sorry to make your job more difficult, but Raven and I were simply carrying out Nadine's wishes. A speedy cremation was what she wanted. It was mentioned in her will. Then you have read your wife's will? Yes, it was read by her solicitor just the other day, to my chagrin. And why do you say that? My darling wife left me a porcelain vase, which I'd admired for years, and the family photo album. Rather meager bequests, don't you think? Is it true that Raven is to receive nothing? She told me that herself. Well, yes. Her name wasn't mentioned once, as a matter of fact. Uh, well, your wife was an exceptionally wealthy woman. She had more than enough to stuff every mattress in merry old England. Uh, well, assuming that you can't take it with you, what did happen to all those millions? Time to put you to bed, by young man. I thought it would be nice if you could stay up and say good night to mommy, but if she... Oh, there she is. It's about time. Hello, Mrs. Twilly. Hi, Jamie. How's my precious little baby, huh? Mrs. Swift, we were about to file a missing persons report. I'm sorry I'm late. I know it was inconsiderate of me not to call, but it has been quite a day. How did things go at the custody trial? They couldn't have gone better. I feel like I'm walking on air. You do seem to be in good spirits. My lawyer said it was all over but the shouting. Well, congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. We've been celebrating over dinner, but now we want to go to the Electric Balloon, so if you could just stay for a few hours, oh, I'd really I'm appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mrs. Swift, but I hate to be a party pooper, but I can't. I won't be gone late. But, Mrs. Swift... If you'll remember, my daughter is visiting me from Boston, and she's going back tomorrow, and we didn't make plans for the evening. Okay, okay, I know you want to spend some time with your family. Here, I'll pay you. There you go. Thank you. And if you need a sitter for JB again, you have my number. Okay, I'll call. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs> Hello, Mr. Moneybags. How are you? I have some wonderful news for you. After what happened today in the courtroom, the judge is going to make you mine forever and ever. And you and I are going to have such a good time together. We really are. Hello? Guess who, darling? Ansel? Is that you? 
one and the same. I can't believe it. It's so good to hear your voice. Where are you in London? When I last looked out the window, that's where I was. Well, how are you? Concerned, thank you. What's the matter? I had a rather puzzling transatlantic telephone communication a few hours ago from Monticello. Concerning what? Raven, what's going on over there? Why was a police detective asking me about Nadine's will? I know exactly who it was asking those questions. Was it a female detective named Saxon? I think you're a mind reader. You know something about all this. Never mind that. Exactly what did you tell her? Uh, she now knows that my inheritance from my dear departed wife was meager, to say the least. But a king's ransom compared with what she left you. Hmm. What else did you tell her? Not much. When I became inquisitive, she became evasive. So I told the lady it was none of her bloody business and terminated the conversation. Great, so she doesn't know where the money's going? Oh, I mumbled something about charities, which was true enough. Your mother did leave several thousand pounds to the orphans or the Pekingese or something of that nature. But surely you know who gets the bulk of the estate. Yes, I certainly do. My lovely little baby boy. Your little precious baby boy. <laughs> By the way, how are the custody proceedings going? Fabulously, thank you. I'm sure that pleases you, knowing how much you dote upon your little child. Anyway, you haven't answered my question. Why are the police so interested in Nadine's bequests? It has nothing to do with the police. Detective Saxon is, is misusing her authority to try to make trouble for me. And why should you do that? <sighs> it's really just a sort of female rivalry kind of thing. You wouldn't understand. Try me. Look, she's jealous of me, that's all. I think she has a crush on Logan, so now she's trying to dig up all these innuendos to try to help me lose the custody fight. But she's not succeeding? No. I am going to win, believe me. And so you win the jackpot. Tell me, darling, what will you do with all that money? Why, I'm going to give Jamie everything he wants. How thoughtful. Mm-hmm. Everything he wants. Including round-the-clock nursemaids, the best money can buy. And then I'm going to be free. I'll be free for the first time in my life to do anything I want. I was under the impression that you've been doing precisely that since the day I met you. <laughs> you know, Ansel, I could take a little trip to London. How would you feel about that? I can't think of anything I'd like more. We could have one of those little family reunions with lots of hugging and kissing. <laughs> I look forward to it. You know how I always enjoy entertaining my stepdaughter. Yes. I would like to ask you one question, though. What would you like to know? Well, I heard a nasty little rumor from Geraldine Saxon that you were, uh, having a hot and heavy affair with a young fashion model. <laughs> Those older women certainly do have vivid imaginations. So it's false, then? Of course, my dear. Well, I thought she was just being catty, but I wanted to hear it from you. Well, now you have, Raven, so fear no more. Listen, it's terribly late on this side of the Atlantic, so I'm going to ring off now. Uh, good luck with the custody trial. Let me know how it turns out. I'll do that, darling. And if you do hop a jet and pop over, call me first, so I'll be prepared. I'll need some time to roll out the red carpet. Okay, good night, baby. Good night, Raven. No need to do that yourself, love. Wouldn't want you to break a nail or anything tragic like that, would we? I am going to put a stop to this once and for all. Hi, Derek. I have to see you. Oh, Raven, not tonight, please. I've had a tough day and I'm bushed. I'm just going to do a little bit of reading and then I'm going to bed. Derek, this is very important. Can't live without me, right? I am serious. Something is happening. I have to speak to you. You know, just once I'd like to hear you say, Derek, I have to see you. It's something absolutely trivial. Whatever it is, it can't be that. Derek, shattering. please. Oh, just for a little while. Where do you want to be? Stay right where you are. I'll be right over. Bye-bye. Great, now I need another babysitter. <laughs> Jamie, I just wish you were old enough to put on a couch in front of a television set, throw a bag of potato chips in your hands. <laughs> this is really desperation. But it 
it's worth a shot. <laughs> Hello. Hello, April. I'm so glad you're home. Raven, you and I have nothing to say to each please, other. Please don't hang up. I realize there's been a slight strain in our relationship, but brace yourself. I'm going to ask you for a favor. Don't waste your breath. Now, wait, wait, just give me a chance. I, uh, I need a babysitter, and I was wondering if you could send Molly over for a few hours. I don't believe you, Raven. I am not running a babysitting service. Molly works for me, and I need her. Okay, uh, I guess I'll just have to call off my meeting with Logan. What meeting? Well, my lawyer decided it would be a good idea if I sat down with Logan and tried to work out a compromise. I see. And I guess I'll just have to let the judge decide about the visitation rights and all that, but I did think I could give Logan a better deal. Why can't he come over to your place? He's working late at the office. Um, listen, hold on a minute. I'll talk to Molly and see what she can do. Great. You walked in here like a volcano getting ready to erupt. Let's hear it. We should have held this little meeting in your office because I would like to file a formal complaint against Detective Saxon. I should have known it was Deborah. What has she done now? I thought that woman was supposed to stop harassing me about my mother's death. I was under the impression she had given up that investigation. The harassment has continued, and believe me, I want to stop to it, Derek, right now. What has she done to set you off now? You know what she had the nerve to do? No, but I got the feeling you're going to tell me. You're right, I am going to tell you. She called London, England, talked to my stepfather, and tried to find out about my mother's will. Are you sure about that? She is obsessed. She is still trying to prove that I'm responsible for my mother's death. I can't believe there's anything personal in this. Deborah is just trying to find an explanation for your mother's death. I thought you were going to put a stop to this. I think you ought to talk to her and in a very loud tone of voice. All right, all right. I'll, I'll talk to her again. Can't you see what she's trying to do? She wants Logan to get Jamie. She testified against me in the courtroom. How could you have let that happen? There is no proper way to prevent that. She's still a private citizen as well as a police officer. Well, she wants to take away my son as well as my freedom. Now, that's ridiculous. It is not. It's true. She'll do anything to hurt me. I feel like I'm being persecuted in some sort of a police state. <sighs> my lawyer was right. I don't have any friends in this town, not even you. Raven, I'm trying to be your friend, but you don't make it easy. Well, you know why. Because I want you to be more than just a friend. And you know it. And you don't care. Of course I care. Then why don't you show it? Terry, can't you see how alone I am? I am so scared. Hey, take it easy. Everything's gonna be all right. You'll see. Oh, it feels so good when you hold me. I guess you've had enough, haven't you, tonight? All right. Oh, you are such a lovely little boy. Oh, if your mommy would only spend more time with you, she'd know what she was missing. <laughs> well, I guess that, knowing your mommy a little, I guess that's expecting just a little bit mm -hmm. and too much. Oh, James, we have company. Excuse me, just a minute. Yes, who is it, please? Elliot, darling, let me in. Uh, Elliot, who? What can I do for you? Elliot, who? Uh, I'm Elliot Dorn, a oh. friend of Mrs. Swift. Oh, Mr. Dorn, I'm so sorry. I know who you are. Ah. <laughs> uh, who might you be? Oh, uh, Molly. Molly Sherwood. Hello, Molly. Yeah. Raven has told me a lot about you. Well, well, I'm always happy to be of help. Molly, could you... Hello, Jamie. Could you do me a favor and tell Raven I'm here? Well, I couldn't do that. Why not? Mrs. Swift is out. Are you sure? Well, I, I'm quite sure. I'm sitting here looking after Jamie until she gets back. Are you sure she's not hiding in the bedroom? Oh, well, why would she do that? Oh, no, I, I just meant... When I spoke to her last, she said she was tired from the day in court and that she was going to sleep. Oh, well, I wouldn't know anything about that. Well, that's odd. Well, now, you'll excuse me, Mr. Dorn. I think oh, Jamie and I are going to have to get tucked. Sure. Bye-bye. Good night, Jamie. Pleasant dreams, you billionaire. I wonder where that little liar can be.
Mrs. Swift is out. Shouldn't you leave? Ah, uh, Molly, can I ask you a question? Uh, were you sitting for Jamie the day Raven's mother came back from the hospital? Yes, I, as a matter of fact, I think he was. Uh, did you have the good fortune to meet the woman? No. No, I didn't even know she was coming over. I see. Molly, uh, can you remember if Raven was in a hospitable mood that day? Oh, well, I suppose that she was. I mean, why are you asking me this? Uh, I was just wondering if Raven felt up to playing the good daughter that day, that fateful day, and whether she served her mother anything to eat or drink. Oh, I wouldn't know anything about that. I mean, she came way after I'd left. It was late afternoon, wasn't it? Yes, from what I've heard, it was. Well, that translates to tea time in merry old England. You'd know more about that than I would. Raven has lived there. And I'm sure she would know that the first thing Nadine would want when she arrived would be a piping hot cup of tea with sugar to taste. What's this? Oh, it's just a number Mrs. Swift left in case of emergency. Whose number is this? Oh, I haven't the slightest idea. Well, let's find out, shall we? Oh, Mr. Dorn, do you really think you should do that? Molly, this could be an emergency. Sounds like nobody's home. Hello, Derek Mallory. Hello, who is this? Hello? You want to know something? <laughs> I was beginning to think we were destined to shake hands for the rest of our lives. <laughs> You know what they say about good things being worth waiting for. Mm -hmm. I just want you to care, and when people care, they want to protect. <laughs> you need about as much protection as a 5,000-pound gorilla. That's not true. I'm weak. I'm weak, and everyone takes advantage of me. Look what my lawyer said. I don't have a friend in the world. But you never seem to care about friends. There's only one person that I can afford to care about, and that is my baby. I know how much this trial means to you. Huh. It means everything to me. It's my whole future. Who the hell is that? I don't know. It's your apartment, darling. Who is it? Messenger from headquarters, Chief. <laughs> Damn. Hello, Chief. I hope I didn't interrupt the pinch. The hell do you want here, Dorn? A social call, Chief. Raven left a phone number lying around. So that was you who called before, wasn't it? I just had to find out where my sweetheart was. Get out of here. You have no right to be here. Sorry I missed you, darling. I stopped by to have a cup of tea. Have you ever had one of Raven's teas, Chief? She makes a mean cup. All right, Doran, take a walk. Don't pull your badge, Chief. I was going to leave anyway. I have to get back to my office. There's a certain document I have to get out of my safe. I need it for tomorrow morning. Well, I guess I'll see you in court. Darling. What is it? What's the matter? Did it mean that much to you to have him find you here? He's a monster, Derek. You don't know. He used to be your lover, didn't he? I don't think you're revealing any secrets. It's obvious. All right, so we had a thing. That was ages ago. Do you know that? Yes. 
Why does it upset you so much to have him come up here now? Because he scares me. You have no idea what kind of a man he is. He gets very jealous. Worried about me? Don't be. I can take care of myself. No, I'm worried about something else. It's not going to harm you either. I promise you that. If you want me to deliver a little warning in advance, I will. I can do that very effectively. Oh, I feel sick. You want something? No. I got to get out of here. I got to go home. Maybe you ought to relax. No, no, I got to go home. All right, I'll drive you. No, he might be upstairs watching. Well, that's all the more reason for me to Derek, be here. Derek, no! He said he was going back to his office. What did he mean by that document he had to get? I don't know. I have to go home. I have to think. Why did you let that man in this house? Oh, Mrs. Swift. You let Elliot Dorn in this house and then you let him run around like oh, he Mrs. owned the place. Swift, I just couldn't stop him. He just barged right in. Well, why didn't you throw him right out? Well, now, how could I do that? Now, look, Mrs. Swift, I'm very sorry, but I wasn't expecting anybody tonight. You didn't say anything. Well, I wasn't expecting him either. He was the last person I expected. All right, what else did he say? Nothing much. I put Jamie into bed and then i came out here and i found him in the kitchen the kitchen the kitchen he said he was nosing around the kitchen and he kept talking about tea yeah he said a great deal about that so uh then he came in here and read the pad and made a call right mm -hmm, that's and right. why didn't you stop him well i mean i had no choice i'm very sorry mrs swift but well i there didn't seem to be anything else i could do what am i gonna do excuse me nothing will you please get out of here i have to think well, it's time for me to go anyway. What am I going to do? Jody, why don't you go on home? I'll finish up here for you. Oh, no, Charlie, that's okay. You have enough stuff to do yourself. Hey, it's getting late, and I worry about a kid your age going home at this hour. Oh, I'll be fine. Well, okay. I guess I better get downstairs and lock up. You take care of everything, huh? Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Hey, Jody. Jody. Well, hello there. Hey, do you know what time it is? You should be in bed, little man. Ah, uh, well, you see, I can't go to sleep until I get a kiss Good night. Oh, is that your problem? Okay. <laughs> there, now do you think you can sleep? Oh, now I won't be able to sleep at all. Why not? Because I'll be thinking about you, that's why. Oh, well, don't you worry. You'll be in dreamland before you know it. Good night. Oh, wait, please, please don't go. Okay, but I can only stay a few minutes. I want to go to bed myself, you know. Oh, maybe we can, uh go together, eh? Yeah, sure. You hop into your bed and I'll hop into mine. I'd rather hop into yours. Well, now, now, don't be a naughty puppet. Oh, come on. I won't take up much room, you know. I think you should find yourself a nice little girl puppet. But it's you that I want. Eh, hey, I bet we could have a great time tonight. We could go into Mr. Dorn's office. I've got the key, you know. Sorry, I have to leave. Hey, I know where there's a bottle of champagne. You know I don't drink. Well, maybe this is a good night to stop, eh? Sorry, I have to go. Oh, don't go away mad. Jody, please just give me your hand. Okay. Oh. Jody, I'm crazy about Kelly, you. Cut it out. Stop it. This isn't funny. Kelly? Kelly, I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Kelly? Kelly? Oh, Kelly. I'm sorry. I really didn't mean it. Who said it was Kelly? Mr. Dorn. I can be good too, Jody. If it works for Kelly, why not for me? Mr. Dorn, I think you're drunk. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'll be very good to you, darling. No, 
No, I don't think so. Oh, you're a bit chunky. Mr. Dorn, why don't you go to your office and lie down, and I'll just leave. <laughs> Mr. Dorn, why are you doing this? Ah, uh, Jody. Mr. Dorn, stop this. Ah, uh, Jody. No. Jody. No, don't do this. No. Jody. No, please, no. No! Stop! I mean, no! Stop! What the hell are you doing? Put her down! I'll put her down. Kelly, no, no, wait off me. Come on. Kelly, Come on, stop, you're all right, boss. Stop, Take stop, it easy, will you? Take it easy. Stop. You're fired, puppet man. You heard me. Get out of here. Don't even throw this puppeteer any money. About a half a week's pay, I guess, boss. This will cover it. Take that and go out of here! Come on, Kelly, let's move. Let's move. You can come and get your friends tomorrow! That's why Jody, she stays here. No, she doesn't. If Kelly leaves, so do I. Well, get out, both of you! Get out here, will you? Come on, man. Don't make any big decisions right now, Mr. Boyd. Shut up, Kelly! Take it easy, this is you? my night to take big take decisions. It. You all right? Holy smokes. Hello, unicorn. What's left of it? Who? Just a moment. It's for you, boss, a lady. This is Swift, no doubt. It sounds like a. Tell her I'm washing my hair. Mr. Swift? No, no. All right, I'll speak to her. Hello, darling. How are you and the police chief getting along? Elliot, I'm home, but I want to come over and see you right now. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. I had a little bit too much to drink tonight. I'm going to lie down in my office. I'll get some rest. Elliot, I want to see you. Please, are you alone? I mean, I can come over, we can talk. After I've had my rest, I'm going to do some paperwork. I'm sure you know what that means. <sighs> I've got to stop him. I have to. Sir. Sure. 